Okay, good day to all of you. So we're already in our last chapter, which is all about programming the Arduino beyond the basics. So for the recap of the last chapter, we have uh, learned all about the basic programming concepts that all programmers should know, such as functions, looping, decision making, all about um, um, the curly brackets, the semicolon, the variables, its data types and arrays. So by now, so for this chapter, we'll be using those programming concepts that are found in various programming languages and apply it in the Arduino programming. So again, let's start. What's all about this chapter 7? So in this chapter, we will learn how to set the pin mode on an Arduino digital pin how to get and set the values of an Arduino digital pin, how to get and set the values of an Arduino analog pin, how to use structures and unions, how to use additional tabs, and how to use classes and objects. So first is setting the digital pin mode. Before we use the digital pins, we should configure them for either input or output depending on what we are using them for. So first and foremost, for digital pins, you have to identify first if the digital pin will be used as an input or output depending on what com electronic components that you're going to uh, put for those pins. So the syntax for uh, digital pin mode is pin mode and then it's a function inside is the pin or the pin number or the pin name and then comma and then the mode actually there are only two modes for pin mode it's either input or output in capital letters um, input in small letters or small lower uh, lower case or or in title case or sentence case um, of course um, the ide is very case sensitive so you must follow the correct uh, syntax which is all caps for input and output so example is we have the pin mode and then meaning your pin 11 for your arduino it is set as input and then another example your uh, pin mode your pin number 12 will be assigned as output of course if you assign um, pin 11 as input you should use input uh, electronic components for that and also for for example for pin 12 which is an output of course you have to use output electronic components do not interchange them because you're already setting them as uh, pins as either input or output so you must correspond it to a correct input or output electronic components and then as i've said again it should be in all capital letters for the input and output Okay, it is a good practice never to use the pin numbers themselves to access the pin on the Arduino. Technically, uh, let's go back. Technically, this is correct, but then um, it's better to assign a name. As I've said, in naming variables, it must be meaningful. It should describe something, not just the uh, solely the pin number. So what if it's pin 11? So it's an input. So what does this in does this pin uh, is doing? So we do not have a proper description of what this uh, pin 11 as input is functioning or what it is really doing in the um, circuit. So it's better to have a name for this um, two pins, for example. So instead of using the pin numbers, we should set a variable or constant with the number of the pin and then use that variable or constant when accessing the pin. So this will prevent us from typing in the wrong number within the code. So that's why um, it is really recommended that you have to have a variable or constant for assigned for the pin numbers. So we can use the following. So use number sign define to define the pin numbers used when the pin number will not change. This allows to separate pin definitions from the other constants within the sketch. So if you wish to use constants instead of number sign defined, that is perfectly acceptable and some people would say it is preferable. But uh, specifically for our Arduino, we are using number sign defined because it uses less memory compared to constant. 
So, instead of using uh, pin numbers such as 12 and 11 in the previous example, we have to put number sign define. Then, of course, that is said for a variable uh, for the name of uh, with the define um, directive is we have you have the number sign define. It should be in capital letters. Example: define number sign define space button one all caps. And then, since these are uh, two words, and of course we're not following camel case for number sign define. Um, if you want to represent a space, you could use underscore. So, button underscore one and then space and then the pin number. So, this pertains to pin number 12. So, by this um, line of code, we, ha we will have an idea. Oh, so the, the input device or input component that is connected to pin number 12 is a push button because we have button underscore one. At least you have an idea of what type of an input device is being uh, connected in that pin, not unlike the previous example. Oh, yes, it's pin 11, then input. So what? So what What type of component uh, is pin, uh, is, uh, is this is connected to pin 11 or 12? And then another one is we have, another is the number sign define, space, then again, all caps for the variable name for define, LED underscore one, and then space, and then the pin number. So since a uh, uh, button is an input, so you you should uh, expect that this should be that this should be what that this should be an input and LED should be an output, and then we have as uh, it should be declared before void setup. So meaning it is a global variable. So void setup function. So of course, so for setting up. The buttons, the LEDs, output, input devices, setting up, you should declare this, uh, declare the pin mode in the void setup, not in the uh, void loop. So we have, of course, the pin mode. So again, the pin, uh, the pin number or pin name or the name of the, uh, the, the pin. So that's why we've already assigned pin number 12 as button underscore one, and then it is assigned as an input and then another one pin mode we have led underscore one comma and then it is an output okay never interchange those two specifically button because button is an input device okay then led is an output device so you have to be con you have to consider if it is a push button it will always be an input and then if it is an led it should always be an output okay uh, you will not have a correct or you you can you cannot expect a button to light up because it's not a LED because it's not an output device rather an input device and for LED one you cannot expect it as a push button even though you press hard the LED nothing will happen because it is an output it displays for example it is it displays for for example it is used for status indicators while push button of course it is used as input. Okay, uh, next is we have the pin mode function can also be used to configure the internal pull-up resistor by setting the mode of the pin to input underscore pull-up. So, this will invert the behavior of the pin when it is in input mode. But um, for, for our um, programming exercises in Arduino, input underscore pull-up is rarely used. It's always been um, output or input. Okay, if we have a pin mode, we have the, the following um, syntax. We have the digital write. So to set the value of a digital pin in the Arduino programming language, we use the digital write function. So this function takes the following syntax. So digital write in camel case, and then the pin, and then assign it a value. Digital meaning... Uh, digital only has two values, which we have 0 and 1. But we're not going to put here as 0 and 1, but rather a word to uh, easily understand that it is on or off. So this is an example of how are we going to put uh, 
values for the syntax. So, digital right again in camel case. And then the pin, which is LED underscore 1. And then the value is high. So, uh, the two values for digital uh, right is high or low. So, meaning, if we're going to execute this program, digital right LED 1 high, it uh, the LED will turn on and then there's a delay of 500 actually 500 milliseconds actually it is half of a uh, second because one second is equals to 1000 milliseconds this is 500 milliseconds so one half of half of a second so if you have here a 5000 okay what if we have a 5000 here if we have a 5000 here then what we will have a five second delay so that's what's the meaning of the uh, delay here delay is also a function so you have to remember that um 1000 of the delay here it's not measured in seconds but in milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds here is equals to one second so delay is measured in milliseconds so 500 milliseconds half of a second and then another one is digital right LED one low. So it will have a delay of also 500 milliseconds. So meaning this will blink. First it, it will blink, uh, it will be turned on. And then after 500 milliseconds, it will turn off. And then um, actually this uh, this digital right is, uh, will be encoded inside void loop so it will be repeated endlessly as long as the arduino has power so uh, the effect of this led from the led because the same led uh, that they are um that they are modifying the 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 value so it will blink on for 500 milliseconds and off 500 milliseconds and then it will blink fa very fast for a half a second Okay, so as I've said, so again, this is the complete um, uh, Arduino sketch. So let's define. So number sign define. Space LED underscore 1, all caps, and then space 11. So LED 1 is uh, assigned to pin 11. And then let's set up the LED. Since LED is an output, so we have to explicitly um, declare that LED1 is an output. So, pin mode. So, again, camel case. And then, the pin, LED1, comma, output, all caps. And then, since, again, if you're declaring, all the declarations must be put inside the void setup. And then, void loop. This is what I've been telling you with the example of the digital write. So, digital write, LED, uh, LED1 high for 500 milliseconds and digital right LED1 low for 500 milliseconds, um, it will repeatedly done because it is uh, inside the void loop. So the effect for the LED1, it, it's, it is blinking on and off. Okay, next is we have, if we have digital write, we also have the digital read. So, to read the value of a digital pin in the Arduino programming language, we use the digital read function, also in camel case. So, we have, it only needs one value, which is the pin. So, digital read, and then its parameter is pin. So, it only reads the value of a digital pin if it is high or low. And then, to declare or to how to use digital read in Arduino sketch is uh, mostly you have to declare a value or an integer integer data type and then the name is for example is val is equal to digital read and then its pin is button underscore one it means that whatever this uh a digital read has read on the bot button one which is it's also digital meaning it will only read high or low and then the value will be what it will be stored the high or low value read uh, read by the digital read in button 1 will be stored in integer value so that will be the 
the case again in programming. So that's why it needs an integer to store what is being read in button underscore one. So we have another example. So number sign define space button one all caps and then there's an underscore button one then space 12. So uh, button one is uh, connected in pin number 12. Okay, you have to make sure, for example, in your program, if it is in pin number 12, if you're going to set it up in your Arduino board plus the breadboard, make it sure that it is on the correct pin. Because if, if, you, if you connected it in the wrong pin or not pin 12 for this example, it's either your, uh, your button will not function correctly or it will behave differently. So you have to make sure that they have, cor uh, they have the correct pin number in the Arduino sketch and also in the in the uh, com uh, setting up in the Arduino uh, board plus the breadboard. Okay, so next is, again, you have to set it up. So declare it as, because, because button underscore one is an input device. So we'll be using here a, Again, a serial uh, serial monitor. So we need serial dot begin nine thousand six hundred, and then end it with a semicolon, and then pin mode, and then of course the button button one since it is a push button. So declare it as an input, and then again end it with a semicolon. So this is the end for the void setup, and then for the void loop again. So you're going to read the status of button underscore one. So what what are you going to what syntax are you going to use to get the value of button one? Is we're going to use the digital read. So digital read, then button underscore one, and then of course you want to store uh, the value that is read by digital read. So it will be stored in val. So it will be stored in here. Okay. After storing what is uh what's the status of button one high or low and then stored to uh, int val, there will be a condition. So if val is equal, uh, again double equal sign is equal to high, meaning uh, if you press the button, it means it is high or the button push button is of course pressed. If if it's not pressed, then it is low. So the meaning of this line is if val is equal to high, meaning if the push button is pressed and then you're going to uh, execute this code, serial.println button high. So meaning this, this uh, statement means that uh, the push button is pressed. So that's why the button uh, button high or button on or button pressed it depends upon your message. Okay, otherwise, for example, if value is equivalent to low or no one has pressed the push button, so what will be, this will be the one to be executed, serial.println, button low or button off, button not pressed, it, again, it depends upon the message that you want to convey to your user. So actually, this code only tests um, if your push button is pressed, it will display button high and then if your uh, if the push button is not pressed and then there uh, there should be a button low so actually if you run this program if you will run this sketch um, default the message for the serial print ln is button low because the value is equal to low no one has pressed the button yet it will only print or it will only show the message button high if you or someone has pressed press the push button. So that is the function of this um, Arduino sketch. Okay, next is we have the analog write. Analog values are written to the Arduino with the pulse width modulation or PWM pins. On most Arduino boards, the PWM pins are configured for pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. However, the Arduino Mega has significantly more pins available for PWM functionality. 
So, analog right is, we have digital right, there is also an analog right. So, it's more complex. Why? We can see later. So, this is the syntax in camel case, analog right, and then pin number, and then the value. So, the value for the analog right function can range from 0 to 255. So, uh, unlike digital right, which is its, num its uh, value is high or low, for analog right, it can range from 0 to 255. Okay, again, we have another example. So, we have to define LED1. So, number sign define space. LED1 all caps, LED underscore 1, and then space. We're going to use pin number 11. And then we will also declare a, a variable val and change, which is actually a global variable because this is declared outside of the void setup and void loop. So int val is its initial value is 0, and then int change is equals to 5. That's their initial values. Of course, and then next is we have void setup again since we used a uh, pin number 11. So, declare it explicitly as since LED, it is an output. So, pin mode, LED underscore 1 and then output and then end with a semicolon. And then in the void loop, okay, we have since our value is 0 and change is 5. So, okay, uh, I, I might say for... for uh, for execution of the uh, Arduino sketch, it is done sequentially, line per line. So, uh, you can see this value as, here, as you can remember, plus is equals, meaning you're going to add val and change and store the results in val. So, our value for val is 0, and then our initial value for val is 0, and the initial value for change is 5. Okay. So, 0 plus 5... So, we have, of course, it will be 5. And this 5, okay, the initial value of val is 0. Since it is said that after this, uh, uh, after adding, we're going to replace the value of val into what? Into 5. So, the, the new uh, value of val is equal to 5. So, it is said here that if val is greater than 250 or greater than 250 or val is less than 5 change times uh, times is equals to negative 1 okay since our change is 5 so you have to uh, what will be its value so change is 5 and then we have negative 1 so 5 times negative 1 have negative 5 and then this negative 5 will be stored on change and then we have analog right, so LED underscore 1 val and then delay 100. So, what is this um, code doing? Uh, we have an LED and then it will change its brightness. It will change from, for example, it will start as, as bright. And then it will change, it, it will dim. And then after, since it is, it is in the void loop, it will be uh, done repeatedly after it becomes dimmer. It will be it will brighten again, and it will um, it will continue to to do so and uh, until the Arduino is turned off. So this is the the way. So how is it possible since uh, for a digital right or digital right you're just uh, it's just a zero or one on or off. But for analog, what, what's so special with analog is that you can change the values, uh, not just uh, on or off. For LED, you can make it brighter or you can make it dimmer depending on the value of, for example, for this analog right, LED1 and then VAL and then delay 100. So that this is what the, uh, the, the Arduino sketch is doing. It brightens or it dims the... Uh, the LED repeatedly because it is uh, it is uh, it is in the uh, uh, loop function. Okay, if we have analog right, we also have analog read. So we read we read the value from an analog pin using the analog read 
function. This function will return a value between 0 and 1023. So this means that if the sensor is returning the full voltage of 5 volts, then the analog rig function will return a value of 1023, which results in a value of 0 0.0049 volts per unit. Yeah, it is... Um, this can be derived from 5 divided by 1024. So 5 divided by 1024. So that's why we get the 0 0.0049 volts per unit. So this is very important. You have to remember this one. So if it's a full voltage, 5 volts, then for analog grid, it will... Uh, the equivalent function will be uh, the equivalent value will be 0 0.0049 volts per unit and then the form uh, the syntax is of course a uh, camel case analog read and then we all we only need the pin number okay so for this example arduino sketch is we're going to use a temperature sensor a tmp36 sensor so let's define it so, to IP number, so number sign define, space, temp, underscore, pin, all caps, then space, it is uh, connected to pin number 5. And then we have void setup and then serial that begins. So, because we're using the uh, serial to display since temperature, the temperature. So, and then we have void loop. So, in pin value is equal to analog read uh, function of the, uh, the, the parameter is temp underscore pin. So, whatever the temp pin has read, whatever temperature, this will be stored in the pin value. So, that pin value to get the voltage because it's temperature, how are you going to convert it to voltage so the formula for for getting the voltage uh, so that you can you can convert the temperature that has been read by the tmp sensor a uh, tmp 36 sensor is we have this formula pin value times 0 0.0049 and then if you multiply the the value that is read by the analog red to 0 0.0049 you will get the that's the voltage. So this, the values uh, from multiplying pin value times 0 0.0049 will be stored in double voltage. And then to get the temperature, what is the formula? So we have, it is enclosed in open and closed parentheses. So voltage minus, so the voltage is this one, minus 0 0.5 and then the result from subtracting voltage minus 0 0.5 times 100. So that will be the equivalent uh, for temperature in Celsius. And then to get the temperature in Fahrenheit is we have, since we already have temperature in Celsius times 1.8, and then after getting the result of multiplying temperature in Celsius and 1.8 plus 32, then you will have Fahrenheit. So it will be the same that after con uh, after calculating the formula it will be stored to their respective variables and then serial that print okay um as you can see mom why is there why is there no ln uh print ln means new line so ln uh, since this is just print meaning it will not print to a new line so if we're going to print this, for example, our temperature is, um, for example, 37. And then it will be printed. Serial.print will be shown in the serial monitor. And then it will be followed by serial.print since, again, there's no LN. And then the display would be like this. And then serial.print LN, temperature in Fahrenheit. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? So, it will be displayed again. Um, this will be uh, in new line. Okay. So, and there is a delay of 2,000. There's a, there's a new line already because since this is uh, already in the 
in the loop uh, function, it will be repeatedly displayed. So the next will be displayed. It depends upon, for example, if you touch, if you touch, if you touch the temp pin, it will change the temperature. Actually, the temp thirty six uh, sensor measures the room temperature. If you touch it directly, it will have a change in the temperature. And there's a delay of two seconds for every display of the uh, temp uh, temperature in the serial monitor. So again, the fu the function of this, uh, what this Arduino sketch is draw, uh, doing is that you will display the temperature and uh, it's converted to Fahrenheit and it will be displayed indefinitely as long as the Arduino is uh, on. And of course, it will be printed per, will be displayed per line. Temperature, uh, dash Fahrenheit, and then it will have a succession lines of, of the temperature, dash uh, Fahrenheit, uh, temperature in Celsius, and then temperature in Fahrenheit. And then there's a delay of two seconds. Okay, next is we have structures. So a structure is a user-defined uh, and uh, a composite data type that is used to group multiple variables together. The variable in a structure may be of different types, enabling us to store related data of different types together. So for structure, you can store different data types. Unlike for arrays that you can store only the same, they have to have the same data types. So the uh, syntax is we have struct, meaning this is a structure uh, for the data type, and then space, the name of your structure, and then the variable list may be an integer, a character, or a string, and then there are also a pair of curly brackets. And since this is a structure, it's uh, though it looks like a function, but you have to put a semicolon to end because this is the uh, this is your declaration of your structure, and then there are variable lists. That's why it has uh, periods here, meaning you can have one or more. Uh, variables inside a structure. So this is an example. So a struct, of course, the data type is a structure, space TMP36 underscore reading, that is the name of your structure. So structures does not follow the camel case. So what is the content of your TMP36 underscore reading? For this example, we have double voltage, semicolon, double temp C for temperature in Celsius, semicolon, and then double temperature, temp F for Fahrenheit, then semicolon. And of course, for the right curly bracket, you have to have a semicolon at the end. So the following code shows how we would create a variable of the TMP36 underscore reading type. So... Since we have a structure, struct TMP36 underscore reading, we have to declare the another variable that will use this structure. We have the temp. So if we uh, for if we included here as a structure, uh, unlike let's go back with the previous um, code. As you can see. We have double voltage, but since we are using structure, okay, since we have used structure here, in uh, uh, double voltage, double temp C, and double temp F are already inside the structure. So, for you to use those variables inside the structure, there will be a difference in calling them. Since uh, we've declared temp here for the structure, uh, temp will be a variable to be used to access the variables inside the structure. So what we'll do here is the name of the variable temp dot voltage. Of course, again, the formula is just the same with the previous example. And then for if you want to access the variable temp C inside the structure, we have to use temp dot temp C. So temp dot volt then of course since voltage is inside the, the TMP36 underscore reading structure, then you have to put temp dot voltage minus 0, 0 0.5. And then for also 
for temp C, since it is inside the structure, then you have to use temp dot temp C. That will be the difference if you're going to use a structure. Okay, so this code is actually just the same with the previous example of uh, reading the temperature. But the only difference is that we have used a structure here. Okay. We have used the structure. Uh, we've only declared it in here, but for structure, of course, the double voltage, double temp C, and double temp F are inside already the, of the structure TMP36 underscore reading. So just like the previous um, Arduino sketch, so since we're using serial print, so serial or serial monitor, so we have serial that begin then 9600. And then since we are using to get the temperature is we're going to use the structure. So we have here struct space TMP36 underscore reading the name of the structure and then we're going to define a variable for that structure. And then of course, we have it doesn't change here in pin value is equal to anal analog read and then the team temp pin and then Okay, this will this is the difference. And this is the difference and also this function and this the function of show temp. Okay, the of course the difference because it is already included um in the structure. So to access since the name of the variable that accesses the structure is temp. So temp dot voltage, the same formula. So temp dot temp c is equal to uh, of course, since voltage is already inside the structure, so you need to have the name of the variable for the structure. So temp that, that voltage minus 0 0.5, uh, just the same formula. And then for temp that temp F, again, since temp C is al also inside the structure of the MP36 underscore reading, so you need to have the name of the variable for the structure. So temp that temp C times 1.8. Again, it's the same formula. And then we also have the function show temp. And then the temp. Uh, these are just the same. These two. So, and then we have the delay 2000. And then this function is shown here. The detail of the function. So, void. It will not return any value. Show temp. So, it will use the, uh, the name of the variable of the structure. So the, the variable used by uh, structure TMP36 underscore reading is temp. So that's why struct underscore uh, un struct space TMP36 underscore reading temp. And then uh, this is where you will print. So serial dot print then temp dot temp C. And then we will have again the dash and then temp dot temp F. Okay. Oh, is there any difference when you run? Actually, there is uh, nothing. Nothing will change with the previous example. Um, it just shows that we can also create a structure. So this is an example. So uh, actually, it's up to you if you want to use a structure or not. It depends upon your preference and where you are most comfortable with with uh, Arduino sketch. But then this example and the previous uh, Arduino sketch for temperature reading, they are just the same. Okay, next, aside from structures is we have the unions. So a union is a special data type that enables us to store different data types in a single definition, similar to the structure. However, only one of the members may contain data at any one time. So that's the difference between structure. Structure can contain uh, data all at the same time, while union can only contain date. They can they can store uh, data, but uh, it can only uh, contain data at any one time. So it's almost like similar to structure. Is that it's just just that the name here is of course union. And then the name of the uh, union uh, data type. And then there's also variable list. 
one or more variable list and of course a pair of curly brackets and then a semicolon at the end. So, for example, we have this uh, particular example. So, union space sum underscore data and then we can have int i. Again, we can store uh, different data types. Integer i semicolon double d semicolon and then character string s with 20 data elements then semicolon again a pair of curly brackets and a semicolon again so what is this application so let's use it in an arduino sketch first just like the structure you have to declare it as a global variable okay you have to declare it outside okay so we have this one again, int i double d car character string with 20 uh, elements. Okay, void setup. So we're going to use print ln serial that begin 9600. Then to access the union, is we have union, the name of the structure, some data, and declare a name, a variable name for the union. So you called it my data. So just like the structure, you're going to use it to access the uh, variables inside the union. So we're going to use it as my data that i. So you're going to assign an integer value for int i, which is 42, and then for my data that d. So double d is equals to 3.14, and then str copy means string copy my data dot s and then Arduino meaning uh, since you ha don't have a, va a value yet for uh, character string, character string array. So meaning for string copy, copy Arduino to my data dot s. So this will be the value of ca uh, the character string with 20 elements is Arduino. Then D is 3.14, I is equal to 42. And then you want to print them. Actually, since it is uh, in, inside the void setup, it will only be printed or displayed once. So serial.println, mydata.s. So serial.println, mydata.d. And serial.println, mydata.i. Okay, actually, if you run this program, uh, mydata, uh, mydata.s will display the string Arduino while this two will display, will not display 42 and 3.14. They will display other jumbled letters or numbers. Why is it? Uh, you can remember it is said, again, for the definition of union, okay, so only one of the members may contain data at any one time. Unlike structure that you can display all of them. For union, it is different. Since what is the, for the three variables of union, which of them is declared last? Actually, the one that is declared last is the string Arduino. So that's why uh, when you declared my data that I is equal to 42, this is the first data that should be uh, will be displayed by union. But since you declared the next my data that the 3.14, you have overwritten 42. So it will be displayed. But since uh, you all also declared another uh, value for character string, which is Arduino, it has replaced these two. It was uh, disregarded. So if you're going to run this three serial that print, print ln, it will display the my data that s properly because this is the last um, value that you have uh, assigned while this two this will display a uh, a combination of numbers or letters so don't be confused uh, that's the characteristic of union if you're going to use the structure it all of it will be displayed but since you've used union um, and then the last uh, the one that is declared is the uh, the string character string so it will only display correctly the word Arduino then the 42 and 3.14 will not so don't be confused why is it it why it why it is different 
from uh, from the structure. Okay, next. Uh, this feature actually is available for Arduino IDE and Arduino Web Editor. Unfortunately, for Tinkercad, there is no feature for adding tabs. But then there is a uh, there is a way on how we are going to combine uh, up the the Arduino sketch in one file. Uh, if if for example the Arduino IDE and the Web Editor versions have tabs. So, to add a new tab to the Arduino IDE, click on the button with an upside-down triangle in it that is located at the upper right side of the IDE window. In the window that pops up, click on the new tab option and you will see an orange bar below the code section of the Arduino IDE. In this orange bar, you can name the new tab and then press OK button to create the tab. Okay, once you click OK, a new tab is created with the name you gave it. Okay, so if you want to, this is our main tab with the void setup and void loop. If you want to add another tab, is click this inverted triangle and then select new tab. And then after that, actually for some it is color color orange but some it's color yellow so you have to rename your new tab it's not just you new tab you can re rename it uh, depending on your needs then after after renaming this and then you have to click okay okay since you did not for this example since uh the name for the tab is not changed so that's why it is it appeared it appears as new tab and then of course you haven't saved the status yet for the new tab, so that's why there is a symbol for this one, meaning um, the, your uh, progress has not yet saved. Okay, we can create a new tab in the web editor exactly as we did in the Arduino IDE. So that's why I, I told you that um, this can also be applicable in the web editor. So in the web editor, there is a similar button with an upside-down triangle or inverted triangle. So when that button is clicked, a menu will appear and you can select the new tab option. Once you name the new tab, it will appear in the web editor. Okay, next is working with tabs. So when creating a new tab, the first thing we need to decide is what is going to the tab. So a header file is a file that contains declarations and macro definitions. Sometimes you're creating a tab because you're going to create a header file. So a header file is composed of this um, words, uh, the uh, number sign if and def and number sign and if. Ensure that the header file is imported only once within any tab. The if and def looks to see if the LED underscore H constant is defined. And if it is not, then it includes the code between the if and def and number sign and if. Okay, since we added a new tab, okay, do we have a correction here? Since the, the font that is used in this uh, PowerPoint presentation are all caps, actually, this will be written as LED. The name of the, of the uh, tab is LED.h, all small letters. Because if you will follow this all capital letters, you will have an error because if you're going to declare it in the uh, in using include, it should be all small letters. So, led.h, so number sign if and def, and then uh, led, this is for the header files, led underscore h. So, just like define for if and def, it should be in all caps, and then number sign define space led underscore h and then number sign define led underscore one all caps and then three and then number sign define led underscore two and then it is assigned to pin 11 and led led one is assigned to pin three and then and if for the header file number sign and if Okay, create another tab in which you're going to type the function, the LED tab. 
Again, this can be small letter. Okay, so LED. Just just type the name LED. So void, void again, it will not return any value. Then function blink underscore LED. And then its parameter is int LED. So what, what will this function do? If you can observe, it will uh, make the LED blink. Uh, bl it will be high for half a second and it will be uh, low for half a second. So uh, the function of this uh, LED, as it is already described here in the function, that it will make the LED blink. Okay, now in the main tab, we will need to include a uh, numbers and a uh, number sign include statement at the top of the tab to include the LED that that H. That's why I said it's all small letters header file. So you must include number sign include. So this is for including library or header files. Then LED that H, and then uh, put double quotes and put LED inside those double. Quotes. And then small letters or lowercase letters. So, and then if we are adding a header file from the sketch, we are working in the name of the header file is surrounded by double quotes. If we include a header file from a separate library, the name will be surrounded by less than and greater than signs. Okay. Uh, if we're going to add a header file from the sketch, use double quotes. But if the header file is from a separate library, then we have the symbol less than or greater than and then the name of the header file from a separate library. Okay, so we have already the LED.h tab, the LED tab, and then we also have the main tab. The main tab has the void setup and void loop function. So it is said that uh, in order for you to access the tabs, you must have, since the LED.h is a library, you must include it at the top. So, let's type number sign includes space, then LED.h, and close it with double quotes, and there, there should be no semicolon. Again, the meaning of this line of code is you're going to include the the ones that you have declared led.h uh that for example what have you declared let's go back with that yeah you have declared led1 and led2 inside the led.h okay the question is what if we we would we will not include led.h uh, led underscore one led underscore two will be declared as uh, uh, actually, it is not declared because this is inside already LED.h. So you have to declare it if you don't want to include the LED.h. There will be an error so, uh, as such that as LED underscore 1 and LED underscore 2 will be, will be uh, it will not be recognized as uh, a variable since you did not include LED.h. So again, void setup. So... There is a line comment. Put your setup code here to run once. Okay, so pin mode, LED1. Since these are two LEDs, so their mode is, they are both output, uh, output components. So again, pin mode for LED2. So another for the uh, LED2 as output. And then void loop, uh, put your main code here to run repeatedly. Okay. Um, since uh, the tabs are included in one project or one sketch, um, Arduino will already um, definitely um, recognize that blink underscore LED is included in the LED tab. So we have LED1 and then delay is we have one second delay and then LED2 will also blink. That's why they use the blink underscore function that it is uh, in the LED tab. So, what does this code do? This code uh, does is LED, uh, LED1 will blink and then after one second, LED2 will blink. And then they will uh, blink alternately as long as the Arduino has power. So, the use of tabs is to make your 
main tab um, less complicated because you for example LED that H is the, uh, is uh, it is uh, encoded in another tab and also the blink underscore LED is encoded to another tab so it makes your main tab uh, less uh, complicated less messy and more readable Okay, um, aside from uh, using uh, Turbo C like a uh, programming language and Ardu uh, Arduino, we can also create uh, object oriented programming in the Arduino IDE. So, object oriented programming or OOP is a programming paradigm that helps us divide our code into reusable components using classes and objects. So, what is the definition of object? It is designed to model something. And class properties are variables that are defined within a class and usually define something about the object. So, a constructor is used to create an instance of a class. A class method is simply a function that is part of a class and usually defines the functionality of an object. The Arduino.h header file contains the definitions for all of the custom Arduino functions. So, it is automatically added to the main tab. However, if you wish to use the Arduino custom functions in other tabs, as is needed here, we need to import this file. So for uh, for the main tab, you don't need the Arduino.h, but if you're going to use it to the to other tabs that you have done, you have to include Arduino.h header file. Okay, so for this example, actually, it has no difference with um with with the previous example, uh, it will also blink the, the 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 LED. But for this example, it will only um, use uh, one LED. So though it is declared two LEDs, but for the uh, for the uh, for the code, um, only one LED LED is used. And um, it's not that we're going to use this. Um, uh, this object-oriented programming, this only shows that object-oriented programming is also possible with the use of the Arduino IDE. But then, the behavior is just the same. But then again, it's up to you if you're going to use the object-oriented programming or uh, the, the, the same or the traditional uh, Arduino um, way of coding. So, we have the LED.h again. This is a small letter LED. Small letter, all small, uh, lowercase, LED.h. So again, number score if and def, then again, space LED underscore h, and then num number sign define, space LED underscore h, all caps, and then define two LED, LED1 to pin 3, and LED2 to pin 11. And then, of course, since we are already in object-oriented programming, we have this class class LED, and then we have int LED pin in camel case, uh, long on time, long off time, and then public is we have a function LED with parameters in pin, long on, and long off, and then the functions are void blink LED, then void turn on, and then void turn off. So, and then it, since it's a class, then end it with a semicolon, and then end the uh, header file with number sign and if. And then there's another tab which is called LED.CPP. So again, it, it's uh, in lower case, LED.CPP. Okay, so it's not yet the main tab, but since it's already said that if it is not the main tab and then you're going to use uh, custom Arduino library function. So, you have to use Arduino H. So, you, you need LED.H. So, again, number sign includes space, then double quotes LED.H and another one include the Arduino H, then number sign include Arduino H.H and close it in double quotes. And then we have this one, LED, double colon, LED, then the parameter of the function LED in pin long on and then long off and then pin the value of pin will be stored in LED pin and then set 
LED pin, LED pin to output since it is an LED. And then the value of on will be stored in on time and the value of off will be stored in off time. And then void LED double colon then turn on. Of course, uh, the function is what will, uh, what will this function do? It will not return any value but uh, LED pin or digital write it will make the LED pin value to high or on. And then another function, the void LED double colon turn off, opposite of turn on, is that it will make the LED pin into uh, low value or off value. And then next is void LED double colon blink LED. So this pertains to the LED. So then this turn on, use the turn on function, and then it will have a delay of on time, and then this turn off, and then it will delay off time. So this um, Arduino sketch is just the same. It will make the LED blink. Okay, when we implement a constructor or a method for a class, we prefix the name of it with the name of the class followed by two columns. The name of the constructor for a class is required to be the same as the class name. Therefore, the implementation for the constructor is LED double colon LED. So within the constructor, we set the class properties and the pin mode for the pin that the LED is connected. So the next two class methods, the LED double colon turn on and LED double colon turn off, Use the digital write method to turn the LED on or off as already discussed. And then notice how these two methods use the LED pin property within the digital write function method. So this property is set within the constructor when the class is created. Okay, then finally, the implementation for the LED double colon blink LED function method is defined. So this method uses the LED double colon turn on and LED double colon turn off methods defined previously to blink the LED on and off. So when we call a method of a class, we use the dash or the greater than signs or the arrow as shown in the blink LED method. So the, uh, the this keyword, so the this keyword is used to refer to the current instance, which is the uh, LED pin. So this is the main tab. So the only content of the main tab is, since again, you've created a library file, led.h, you have to include it, number sign include, and space, led.h, and then uh, put with uh, uh, double quotes, and then led, and then space, the led, led1, 1000, and then 500. Okay, so meaning you're going to make LED1 blink. And then for void setup, we did not to put anything from the void setup because it is already declared in other tabs. And then for void loop, LED that uh, that blink LED. So it will uh, make LED1 uh, blink. And then on for uh, one second and off for half a second. Um, the problem here is that you can only um, blink LED, uh, one LED at once. Um, if you try to put another line just as this one and then just change it to LED2, you will have an error that uh, why did you declare it again, the LED space LED. So for this um, example, we can only make, uh, make one, uh, one LED blink not the previous example that we can uh, we can uh, blink them uh, we can make that blink uh, alternately or simultaneously okay so for that for the example of object oriented programming it only just shows that Arduino IDE can also be used for object oriented programming but still the functionality is just the same but then again as I've said it's up to you if you're going to adapt the object oriented programming or are to the traditional style of doing uh, or coding the, an Arduino sketch okay next is we have the string library 
So the string library, which is part of the Arduino core libraries, enables us to use and manipulate text easier and in a more complex way than character arrays do. So the only drawback of string is it does take more memory to use the string library than it does to use character arrays, but it is easier to use the string library. So for example, so let's declare the data type string. So capital letter S for string data type. And then str1, the name of the string is equal to, you can declare it as a string. Uh, 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 composed of letters or words, example for this one, Arduino, and close it in double quotes and then semi, uh, end it with a semicolon. Another declaration for string is, again, the string data type, str2 is equal to, it can also be a string function, and then we have inside the string function is a collection of words. So we have, again, Arduino, and then end with a semicolon. So these two are just the same. So you're going to store the word Arduino to str1, and then you're going to store the function, the content of the function string to str2. Uh, then there are actually just the same. They're equal, but they're all of different implementation. Or if you want, so another string data type, then str3 is equal to, okay, if it is a single character, you have to use single quotes so it will what will it uh, then string function string function and then uh single quotes and then b and then end with a semicolon so it will store what letter letter b in str3 and then next is again another declaration so we have string for data type, capital S, and then str4 is equal to function string, what which is which is str2. str2 is Arduino plus school. So, what will be the value inside str4? It will be Arduino. If you're, if you're going to run the program, okay. Okay, plus sign, uh, str2 will not be displayed as str2 because you have str2. So, the content of str2, which is Arduino, so this will be, uh, uh, this will be uh, stored. Plus, okay, plus sign, uh, this is just to um, combine two strings. But if you're going to uh, use serial.println, plus will not be shown. So, what will be shown is Arduino is... Cool. Okay, my run I my handwriting is not cool. So that if you're going to use serial that print ln, it this will be displayed. Arduino cool. If you use this for the string, and then if you use serial that print ln, this will be displayed. Arduino is cool. Okay, so it can also store numbers. So string again, strnum1 is equal to string, then 42. Then string strnum2, string 42. Okay, you can store 42 in hexadecimal. So that's why we have hex. And then string under uh, space strnum3 is equal to the function string, then 42. And then you can store the binary equivalent of 42. So this one is the number 42. Then next is the hexadecimal equivalent of number 42. And last is the uh, binary equivalent of number 42. So that will be stored in str num1, number 2, and number 3. Okay, there are also numerous methods that can be used in instances of the string class. So we have concat, it's a function, and then its parameter is a string. So concatenates one string to the end of the original string. We also have end with, okay, it's a ends with a function which is, um, parameter is also a string. 
returns true if the original string ends with the characters of the other string. And then we also have a function equals. This is used in the string. We'll compare two strings and return true if the strings contain the same text. When comparing the strings, this method is case sensitive. So equals is very case sensitive. If it's just the same word, but with different case, it's an uppercase for the other and other is a lowercase, then they are not equal. So what if you want to compare or compare words if they're really equal, disregarding if it is an uppercase or lowercase letter? So we have this one, equals ignore case. So this will be the function to be used. We'll compare two strings and returns true if that string contains the same text. When comparing strings, this method is case insensitive. So it will disregard whatever case are the words are typed in. And then we also have the length function, returns the length of the strings. The length will not include the trailing null character. So if, if it is um, separated per letter and then we have a null termination character, it is not included, uh, computed as length of the string. And then next is we have replace function. Its parameter is substring1 and substring2. This method will replace all instances of one string with another substring. And then another is we have starts with string. Okay, starts with function and then its parameter is a string. Returns true if the original string starts with the characters of the other string. And then another function is we have two lowercase. So if you can see, they're all camel cases, two lowercase function. Returns the lowercase version of the original string. And then two uppercase, it returns the uppercase version of the original string. Convert it to lowercase and then to convert it into uppercase. So the string library can be used as a replacement for the character array. However, most sample code on the internet uses character arrays mainly because they take up less memory and they execute faster than the string library. So that is the advantage of using a character array. First is they take, they take up less memory and because they take up less memory, so they are faster to execute than the string library. So for the summary, so you can access the tutorial or references. So from this site, from arduino.cc slash reference slash en. So actually, this is the, the end uh, for the presentation of our for chapter. So for our next um, lessons is, the, is we have already have programming exercises and hands-on exercises on how are we going to um, set up electronic components in, our, in the Arduino board, in the breadboard, and then of course we're going to code and then of course we're going to implement it. It's always a uh, two steps um, set up the electronic components and at the same time you have to code and it must be the same. So the question is uh, which is first? Can we code it first or can we set up the electronics component first? Actually, it's up to you uh, as long as the declared uh, variables or pins in the, uh, uh, in the Arduino sketch must be the same with your electronic components. You, you always have to remember that it must be the same, disregarding of if you're going to set up the electronic components first or uh, you're going to code the Arduino sketch first. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. So thank you very much for listening. So if you don't have any questions, so I hope that you have learned for our seven chapters for this uh, course. And then again, um, please like the video, uh, please like the channel, and please subscribe. So again, so we're going to start our journey in the, in the Arduino by by having hands-on exercises and I hope it's not just limited for this for this course I hope that your love for Arduino will be um, will continue so again thank you very much and good day